Have you ever gotten yourself in a situation that you're just like, how did I get here? Like, how did I really end up here? I'm crazy for loving you. But you're at a point where you can't get out, so you just have to make the best of it. Well, with everything circulating in the new surrounding Nick Cannon, it made me remember a time that I put myself in a weird situation and Nick Cannon was there and he kind of made it like a hundred times better. So I felt like this would be a good time to share my experience auditioning for America's Got Talent. So many of you watching right now are thinking, um, Nick Cannon hasn't been the host for a while. Yes, I do know that. Like, I, I definitely remember Terry Crews as the host, but I auditioned maybe like, like eight years ago. Like, I auditioned a while. I auditioned when I was a kid. So I was about, like, let's say 11 or 12 years old. And I remember I was just at the beginning age. So when you audition for a show like America's Got Talent, The Voice, uh, I can't speak on American Idol because I didn't audition for that one, but when you audition for a number of these shows, they have this age requirement. So America's Got Talent, their age requirement was something like 11 or 12 and above. And I remember just begging my dad, please, 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 can you take me? Can you take me? It's right there. It's at Jacob Javis Center. It's in New York. It's so close to home, please. And he, for some reason, he actually took me and we were both in for a wild ride. So when you audition for any of these shows that have something called an open call, it's like, words can't even describe how long of a wait time you have. So you're there from the crack of dawn till the dust. Like I saw the sun rise and I saw it fall. I saw everything and they put you through all these obstacles before you get to audition. So my talent was singing. A lot of people that subscribe to this channel know that I was like a child model and a child actress, but I actually began by singing. So I said, you know what? I've been singing for years. I'm a professional. I could do this. I want to audition. I'm going to definitely get on the show. Yeah, I definitely did not get on the show. But if anyone remembers the season where they had those um, ladies that they had like these balloon butts and their talent was like twerking, but this was prior to when twerking was a trend, it was that season. So I was next to them for the entire audition process. I was in a lot of like the bloopers and the takes of them because I was standing right there but I never made it on to the, the audition with the real judges like Simon and so on, nor did I get on the regular show. So back to the part with Nick Cannon. So this day, basically you're standing on a line outside for like four hours and then you finally get close to inside and they whisk you away. So you're starving because you have to get there at like 5 a.m., 6 a.m. for a 7 a.m. call time. And I did not know this because this was my first time going to an open call. So I figured if I got there at 6.30, I'm like, I'm going to beat the line. So I told my dad, I was like, we have to wake up early. We have to get downtown for 6.30. If I remember correctly, he even drove, which anyone watching this video that lives in New York, you know, is like, there's no parking on 10th Ave and 34th Street. There's, there's no parking. So I remember circling around and then you have to be with a parent or guardian the entire time. So anywhere I went, he had to come. So if I had to like, let's say use the bathroom or like get a snack or something, he had to come with me, which means we would lose our place in line. So I remember standing there for hours and I was like, I'm a child. So I had to use the bathroom. I want a snack. Thank God I packed like I want to say a granola bar and like my dad always carried like these flasks filled with water. So we had that, but like mm -mm, there was like nothing. I think he had a bacon, egg and cheese actually. And I ended up eating half because I was just starving. Like if you get somewhere at 630 and at 10 o'clock, you're still nowhere near where you need to be. 
especially as a child. You're just like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Like, what's going on? So when we get to the front of the line, they say, cut. So that's when I realized they're shooting like these takes outside. They're shooting these like weird promo videos and they're like people doing like all these tricks and these spins and they're like jumping and the singers are like hitting these notes and it looks like a Broadway show but in the middle of Times Square. And yes, we were by Harold Square, not Times Square, but you know, it's just like that New York feel and I think that's what they were going for. So I am like this tall, like I'm not, like I'm below the camera, I'm like this tall. And I'm like, no one's going to see me. I'm not gonna get on camera. I'm not gonna get inside. By the time I get an audition, I'm gonna fall asleep. Out comes Nick Cannon. So I was freaking out. And I'm someone that I don't typically get starstruck. But if there's two people in this world that my mom loves, it's Denzel Washington and Nick Cannon. So I grew up watching Nick Cannon between all that and then like all his hosting gigs when he got older. Nick Cannon was like, he was like my brother because that's all I knew. So he comes out and he like gives everyone a dap and he's like smiling. And even though the production crew is trying to like wrap things up and go as quick as possible, he's like, anybody wanna like shoot some promos? And everyone's just like screaming, yeah, yeah. So he starts to tell us, okay, so we're gonna shoot this. I need you to say America's Got Talent. And he and the production team's like, we're not recording it. And he's like, yeah, but I wanna get them excited. So he was just like so personable. He was so like nice and you felt like a loving energy off of him. So he comes out with this box and I'm like, so like I said, at this time I'm 11, 12, so I'm short. So I don't realize just how short he is. I'm just like, oh wow, Nick Cannon's like an inch taller than me. That's like a big thing. I'm like, he's so tall. He comes out with this box and he lays it on the ground and he tells everyone to like, not get from around him, not like to like go away, not in a rude way, but like he needed like a little space to set up what was like basically a miniature stage to make him appear taller than the crowd. So, he puts this box down and they start to shoot and they're like, no, you're not tall enough. So they put like another box on top and he was like, no, I'm not getting on that. And then they come out with this like bigger wooden box and he stands right next to me. Like he was holding my shoulder at one point. He kept giving me high fives. He was just being so nice. And he does his little stick like, this is season 12 of America's Got Talent. Or whichever season it was. And he starts to say like, and look at these beautiful people around me and they're all full of different talents. Are you ready to see something crazy? And just like, I am i don't exactly remember his exact words, but it was something with that gist where you're like, oh wow, we're gonna see like this wild talents. So when he comes down, I expected him to just like walk off and go about his business, but no, he actually like, he said hi to me and everyone that was like standing directly around him. He gave as much handshakes as he could before they like whisked him away. And then, I don't know, there must be some canon magic because as soon as he finished, everyone in this group, and I want to say there was 200 of us, we got told that we could go inside. So mind you, I'm waiting for like almost five hours and then we do this promo for like 10 minutes and all of a sudden I get to go inside in front of the producers. So I'm excited. Ugh. Well, the story goes a little downhill from here. I never realized that when you're a singer, it's very easy to blow your voice. So I was so mesmerized by Nick and I was so excited to just be on camera and say, I'm gonna be on America's Biggest Show and just like screaming everything they said, chant this, clap that, scream this. I did all of it. So by the time I got in front of the producers, I was hoarse. Like, I mean like, uh, horse, like, like a horse. And it just, honestly, I, I think I sang Heart. So if anyone knows the song Heart Alone, you know it's a very difficult song for a lot of people. 
Now that's an easy song for me. It fits my tone. I had it perfected. This is something that I do all the time. So as soon as I get in front of the judges and I'm already like a little nervous because to me, this is like Hollywood. Like this, we're no longer in New York. Once we're inside, we were like whisked away and I'm looking at Beverly Hills and I'm feeling famous. But then I'm like, these three guys here are the three people that are gonna get me in front of Simon Cowell and get me to my dreams. They are my golden ticket. And yes, I know that's a different show, but they are my golden ticket. So I am like, till now, I always got by on my own. I never, and it's going good. And then, oh, yeah, my voice cracked. So then I got so nervous, I started shaking. And the rest of the song, I think I actually sang over my allotted time and they had to stop me. Because when you do these kind of auditions, I think you get like 45 seconds of a song or a minute depending on the show. So you have to cut the best parts. So most people will go in and sing a cappella, and they'll say like, okay, this section of the first verse this portion, the chorus, or if the bridge is like a higher note, people do the bridge, people do runs, like you are already psyched out when you're in this room because you're there with like seven other artists. Some of them are whack, like of course, but then some are so good. Like you're like, wow, does everyone sound like Adele here? So then I'm just like freaking out already. And then I go up and they're like, oh, so, I just had to, yeah, I just had to keep thinking about Nick Cannon. I'm like, what would Nick do if he was here? And I know that's extremely corny, but like he just made my day because everything went wrong at that audition and I didn't get called back. They, they didn't even send me to the other producers to hear my story or they, they literally was just like, thank you so much. We hope to see you again. And in my head, I was thinking, thank you, Nick because you made my day because everything else here was terrible and I'm hungry and I'm about to pass out and this is definitely against child labor laws but we won't get into that and I'm just like oh, how did my dad get through this now my dad had a blast and my dad's someone that like after a couple hours he gets like a little annoyed with certain situations but he had a blast he was like did you see that guy oh that person was funny oh that person's makeup and this was the year that the naked cowgirl was also there and my dad thought it was the funniest thing because at that time I want to say she was like 70 or 80 she had this long blonde hair and cow hat and she kept saying yeah like I know the naked cowboy and at that time naked cowboy was like the biggest star in New York he was always at Times Square it was just like we were seeing so many people we even saw Mr. Pregnant so they had brought a lot of up and coming YouTube stars because this was a time when I think YouTube was maybe two years in. So YouTube was just starting to blow up and you had people like um, Mr. Pregnant. He had the pot on his hand. He actually stood next to me too. So it was interesting. Like I stood directly next to so many like celebrities and he was like rubbing his stomach. And then there was a... Um, the, the guy that sings like, bye la he, bye la ho, like, or someone that was imitating him because he looked slightly different. So I'm not sure if it was him, but there were so many like internet stars. And at that time I wanted to be an internet star and my dad was just eating it all up. He was just like, this is comical. Like this is gold. So I remember fast forward a few months later because the turnaround for that show is intense. They probably, I want to say I auditioned in August because I know it was like a summer audition and it was hot. Like it was at least 95 degrees that day. And then I want to say the show aired in December because I remember it was snowing and I saw like the first episode of New York and I kept seeing like, that's my head. Oh, that's my feet. Oh, look, that hand, the cannon's hand, it's on my shoulder. And it's just like, I just kept saying, and it was just like, that was enough because I just, was fearless is yeah kind of fearless and I got to audition and I got the experience I knew that was something I would never do again so I actually ended up auditioning for another show so if you guys want to hear that story and who I met 
comment below the voice and I'll know to do the story time on when I auditioned for the well the multiple times I auditioned for the voice but it was definitely America's Got Talent was definitely an interesting day like I definitely met tons of people that like looking back it was so like whoa what is this person doing in New York and like after a while of getting used to open calls I was like okay all these people I grab the train and come here and this is regular but then it was just like wow I met Nick Cannon I met Mr. Pregnant I met like the Byla He guy I met Naked Cowgirl I met this person and there were like tons of people that now there some of them are like big and some of them are like flop but you know it was fun I was 11 I had a time and um as an aside with everything going on with Nick Cannon right now, it's definitely interesting. I can't speak for him. I don't know him personally. I just met him that one time. But I don't know. I feel like a lot of that has to do with perspective, religion, what it's like being a black person in America, what we were indoctrinated with, what we were taught in school and just trying to figure out who we are and where we belong in America. I don't exactly think he was trying to be anti-Semitic. I don't think he's racist. I, I don't know. I don't know what's in his heart, but I personally don't think that. I read the comments and I was just like, yeah, a lot of black people think this. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm not saying it is. I can say that people from that origin are of darker skin. It doesn't mean they're black, it doesn't mean they're white. They're from that place and they are of a certain tan level. So I get where he was coming from. I feel kind of bad that things escalated that much because he was a nice guy, or at least to us, he was a nice guy. And I've worked in this industry for many years and I've met many people who they would not give any extra person auditioning at an open call, like the second, a second glance. They wouldn't talk to us. They were rude. He was not one of those people. He's been kind that entire day. Every time I ran into him, he was kind. I've heard other people that have worked with him for longer periods of time than I say he was kind. So I don't know. I hope everything works out for him and that maybe he makes amends with Viacom. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he makes his own platform because He's at a stage in his career where he probably could be like Oprah and have like Nick Network or like, um, what does it say at the end of, uh, that's incredible, <laughs> but I don't know. So that's my story on why Nick Cannon was on a box, how I auditioned for America's Got Talent and like everything in between, including how I feel about what's going on with him right now. So thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe. If you want to find out what it's like to audition for any television show that has an open call, comment that below. Just say open call. If you want to hear my story on The Voice, comment The Voice. Like this video, share it, send it to a friend, tell them to send it to a next friend, and just keep sending it on. Thank you again.